Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be talking about incubators, business incubators, venture capital, both small and large scale, just kind of give you some examples of different venture capital funds. If you look at the screen, we're just gonna jump right into it. This is Techstars, okay? Techstars is based out of Denver. We're gonna talk first about incubators, right? Where they work. You probably are more familiar with like a Y Combinator or a 500 companies, right? Essentially what happens is businesses that need funding, right? They're kind of just in that very early stage, like seed companies. They, they come to these incubators. It's more just an idea at that point. And they'll say, hey, you know, help me. I want, I want guidance on this business. I want to start this business. And the incubator is going to give them like 30 grand, not a lot, but you're probably, it's more like a, almost like school, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're going to go coaching, to school yeah. like for three months, just like every day you're working on building this business. And in exchange, the entrepreneur gives away like seven to 8% of the business. Okay. To that, you know, kind of incubator fund. Then they grow, right? They have kind of different milestones that they require the entrepreneurs to hit. You they usually have a coach assigned to them. They'll have a demo day where they are the group, like Y Combinator. They've had yeah. a number of incredible businesses come out of there, a lot of tech companies. So they'll have a, a demo day where they'll all present VC funds can come and bid and you know invest in the fund. So these incubators are actually really good coaching programs to help small scale tech companies usually yeah. launch and get started. Yeah, so it is, but remember it's seed, right? So like it's very early stage and probably at the end of the incubator phase, they're gonna like probably have a panel as Bridger was saying, like a demo day where you're gonna pitch to actual VCs to raise your first round, right? Because first round of funding usually comes from the three Fs, right? Friends, family, or fools, right? Or incubators. So uh, that's what they're all about, right? And, and just kind of go through the website, right? So tech stars, they're, they're kind of gonna advertise their different portfolio companies, like look at us, right? Because they want people to come and be part of their incubator. I will say starting an incubator is very tough, right? Because the likelihood of one of these businesses being successful and you making money back is really low, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but once they do, once they grow, you then have like direct, you know, undiluted 8% of the company. So if they go a long ways, you make your money back 10, 100 time X. So you can kind of start like a business incubator in one of two ways, either where you can just like for example, if Bridge and I were starting one, we could both put our own money into these companies, right? So some incubators will have like a lot of different partners or we could just start a fund, right? And go raise money from other people and you know pool that money together to invest in the small businesses. It's interesting with VC funds, it's, it's uh, one strategy for VC funds that they're gonna start an incubator. That's how they're gonna source deal flow. So they'll say, hey, our strategy, we're gonna have, we're gonna go to universities, we're gonna go to college campuses, we're gonna find mm -hmm. really early stage companies and that's where we're gonna get deal flow from and we're gonna be the first very early seed investor in. And this is one way that they source a lot of deal flow. Yeah, love it. Okay, let's move forward to our next example, right? This is Uncourt Capital. All right, I just want you to go through, again, they're gonna kind of show their you know, different portfolio companies that have been successful because they're not really trying to attract investors on their website, right? Obviously, they're probably a 506B, but they're just saying, hey, like, look at us. With Uncore Capital, you're going to get like lifetime partners, right? You're not just gonna get money, right? You're gonna come and get, we're gonna help you grow. So notice, too, how... Uncore Capital does not have an LP portal, all right? So, you know, you can do it one of two ways. Kind of flashback, because our next company is Pelion Venture Partners. Go to their website real quick. Yeah. So they have an LP portal. A lot of funds do. They kind of have it, you know, the same software in place that you can go log in, see your capital accounts as investors. Yeah. You can see Powered by Backstops. So if you want to use these guys, you know, for yours, you could probably get a demo and learn more from them if you want to use them as a back-end solution. Yep, so maybe like great practice as you're building out websites, um, go and visit your competitors, right? And and make it similar to theirs, right? Or or better, right? Take the, take the things that you like about it. Obviously very simple, usually both Uncork and Pelion, they'll have, you know, their team, portfolio companies, news about them, LP portal, really not a lot much more, right? No, not a ton. Yeah, but you know they'll they'll usually just kind of have their niche, and that's what they're gonna go with, right? Uncork goes in several different sectors. Pelion has, you know, they kind of focus in uh, tech. All right, let's go to our next one, Intel. All right, let's talk about corporate venture capital, okay? Because I feel like we have a lot of people coming to our course that have companies they want to raise money, but 
there's just some dynamics that you need to understand there. So inside of a large corporation, Intel is a great example. Google's, Google Ventures is a great example. They will set up a private equity or a venture capital arm of their business to go and invest and acquire small stage businesses for a number of reasons. Sometimes they have a real estate arm just to go and acquire different real estate opportunities or buildings for like Google. Google's got built hundreds of buildings all over the world. They need a full real estate team to source and acquire and dispose of these properties. Same thing with ventures. Google Ventures will go out and do the same thing. They will acquire a number of businesses that they believe would be a great addition to the Google family. Intel here is investing in, they say on their website, disruptive innovation. So they're going to invest into Edge 5G. They're going to do gaming, cloud AI, cybersecurity, enterprise application, silicon design and manufacturing. Notice how they're going to invest in companies that have good synergies with their core products, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of strategies here. First of all, a, venture, a corporate venture fund can go and acquire these companies to build out their products. It could just be where they're experts in the space and they want to invest in these asset classes because they think they know them best and it's a better place to put cash, right? Mm -hmm. So like the, the objective could be profit, like just straight up financial profit. It could be strategic acquisitions. It could, you know, like, so there's a lot of purposes and then the money can come from two places as well. You can set it up as, you know, internally where maybe retained earnings, like are kind of, instead of going to R and D, they're going to allocate a portion of their money to, a, you know, their venture fund. Mm -hmm. yep. Or they set it up as a, you know, subsidiary or a total separate entity, right? Where Intel is a managing partner on that fund, right? Or, you know, has a board seat or has, you know, so much voting rights, mm -hmm. right? To kind of lead it and then raise money from outside investors. A lot of times you'll see this as well for tax advantages. They, instead of just distributing ta you know, money there and paying their full dividends. tax dividends there as well, they'll leave the money in the business and just go acquire real estate or other companies in other ways to grow and they don't have to pay taxes on in certain types of deals and certain ventures, especially if they're investing in the future into green energy space. Yeah. You sometimes can get a lot of tax advantages by doing so. Yep, so that's Intel Capital, right? We wanted to finish here with one of the greats, right? Sequoia. <laughs> Everyone knows them. Everyone wants to be them. There's a lot of awesome firms, right? Greylock is another one out of Silicon Valley. By the way, like 70% of venture dollars come from Silicon Valley alone, which is crazy in the US, right? So a lot of the big firms are out there. Now, a, a key factor I want to talk about on Sequoia, right? Obviously, very similar website. They must have a separate LP portal for their you know, investors as well. This is more just because they do have a big you know, brand. But go back to that core page. Look how many general partners Sequoia Capital has, right? We tell you guys that you need to go out and find partners for your funds. Look at Sequoia. I think there's like 36. Mm -hmm. I mean, they only list like 20 right there or something. But I think they have total 36 different GPs. Some are just like less active. And their structure, all these guys, to be a general partner at Sequoia, you have to have exited you know, as we talk about in other videos, you know, you have to exit a business, right? They're entrepreneurs. They have a lot of money, right? So what happens is a lot of these individual managers will lead an investment, okay? So they'll put a lump of their own money into a company that they want. Then they're gonna, they have this fund, right? The Sequoia fund. Then they're taking money from Sequoia. It's almost like, think of it like a, a JV venture, yeah. right? So, and then they both go into that early stage company makes them put their money where their mouth is. I actually met Matt Miller personally. Um, he came and spoke. I shook his hand. We talked for 20 minutes. I, I actually talked to him on the phone later on. Wow, awesome. Really great guy. And yeah, he, he was talking all about Sequoia. He actually, yeah, had a, had a company before, exited and, and you know, is at, at Sequoia and done very well. So you can have a lot of general partnerships, right? You Kind of like in hedge funds when you have, you know, different portfolio managers that manage different asset classes, right? Like one guy manages... Uh, you know, U.S. equities, the other guy manages bonds, the other guy manages commodities, right? And they're, they're incentivized to make good trades. In this case, you know, to make good investments. Mm. So those are a few examples of different venture funds and what they will do to source deals to make sure, like you saw Sequoia, to make sure general partners are fully invested in their deals to find different startup stage companies and really just find alpha. Yeah. And that's what investors are paying for. They're paying for you to go and figure out asymmetrical risk for them.